ship in a bottle. Simka, Nolik, here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool. I'll be the captain. This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah! Did it break? No, it's all Tadish. It's not close to Tadish. Take a look how this mask broke. Whoa! Oh, uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it. Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lick! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Danish! Ooh, that's better, thank you, guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. No, Lick! You gotta get out! You'll get sick from that stinky air! I can't get loose. I... I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just... wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas, you know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look! What an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? <laughs> Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. I shoot. Well, all right then. Do your homework and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik. I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your soup's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik. Where are you? Simka? Why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. Ah, oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. Be fine. Nolik, 
Do you know who I am? A giant octopus? Toasters, MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The string lights. We're almost all done. Yeah. Now Santa Claus is gonna come over. He'll say, one, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Then we'll get our presents. The real Santa Claus? Yeah, for sure. The real Santa Claus will come to you? You'll see for yourself. He comes to me every year. Okay, so let's practice. One, two, three. Lights light up the tree. Huh? Oh, the string lights burned out. And we don't have another one. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is almost here. Is the tree ready? No, not quite yet. Oh no, oh no. What are we going to do? I'll be right back. Tom Thomas, what do you think? Will Santa Claus give you any presents if there aren't any lights on the tree? No way. It's not right without the light. It just wouldn't be magical. Papus! Masia! Santa Claus is about to come to Tom Thomas, but the string lights on the tree, they all burned out. They all burned out? Really? The bulbs in a string light are connected together like a chain with a piece of wire between each bulb. When you turn on a string light, electricity flows through the wire, lighting up each of the bulbs along its way. But if any of the bulbs gets burned out, the circuit will be broken and the electricity will stop flowing. That means one bad bulb will make all of the lights go out. So if you want to fix a string light with a bad bulb, the answer is really simple. Just find the bad one and put a new one in. So, do we have a spare bulb around here? I'll get it for you. I know where it is. Tom Thomas, hold up Santa Claus for a while. We need a little time to find and replace that bad light for you. I'll try to. Tom Thomas, Santa Claus is already here. Ho, ho, ho! I got one thing to do. So, let's find the bad bulb. Okay, Papoose, let's go! Hmm, this one's working. Maybe this one burned out. Nope. And that? It lights fine. Santa Claus is getting very hot out here. Hold on. Simka, what's up? We checked all the bulbs, but couldn't find a bad one. Huh, I guess this year won't be magical. Okay, Mom, just come on in. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there, Tom Thomas. So tell me now, have you been good all year? Huh, why aren't the lights on the tree burning? So then let's say it together. One, two, three. Ow! Papoose, I found one more bulb. Here's the one that's not working. One, one two, two, three. three. Light, light, light up, up the, the tree. tree. Huh! Now we need to replace this bulb with a new one. So where's Masia? Show your light, O oh tree! Hooray! Hooray! Ho, 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 ho! Ooh, that was really hard. I see you already got it shining. But where did you manage to find a new bulb? We got Papus to act as the bulb. <gasps> Tidish! Tidish! Ah, uh, what a hero. Up so we can put this bulb in. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. Our spirits light up. Whoa! And on the tree. <laughs> yeah! And on, the tree. on Christmas ah, Eve. Nice box. The lights burn brighter. Mwah. Every year when no one is expecting. From some place that no one could conceive. Here's a little miracle before us. Every year on Christmas.
Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve. The clock it seems on Christmas Eve is ticking slower. And suddenly on Christmas Eve, a miracle on Christmas Eve. No one believes on Christmas Eve comes out of nowhere. The Level. Tom Thomas, I'm really sorry. The movie this weekend, I have to cancel. You do? I need to go to Africa for work. I leave tomorrow. Oh, cool. You think I could go with you? To Africa? Can you even find it on the map? Africa. Here we go. Mm-hmm. No, you're still too little. When you grow as tall as the top of Africa, then I'll take you with me. Here, there, ugh. Uh, uh. Tom Thomas, what you doing down there? I want to know if I'm as tall as the top of Africa or not. Well, do you know your height? Uh-uh. Okay, then let's measure you and mark how tall you are. You just need to hold the book, all right? <sighs> Simka, uh, how do we measure what's higher? The top of Africa or this line over here? Hmm. Hmm. It's a tough one. We need a piece of flexible, clear tubing. Oh, I can get it for you. I know where it is. And we'll build a simple tool to find out the answer. It's called a water level. Let's do an experiment. First, we'll pour water into two bottles, a little bit more into one, and a little less into the other. Now we'll connect them with a tube so that the water can flow between them. You see? The water flows and flows, and then it stops. It stops when there's the same amount of water inside of both bottles. And if we do this with a simple tube, it becomes a useful tool called a water level, in which the water on both sides is always the same height. I'm gonna watch the water level on this end, all right? Be careful how you lift it, or the water can get out. Nolik, what's going on? The water inside the tube is even with the line. There you go, Tom Thomas. Where the water is right now is how tall you are. And? Well, it looks like Tom Thomas isn't quite tall enough for Africa. What if we hold the tube a little higher? You can try if you want, but the water's going to stay where it is. The water level on your side always stays the same as on the other side. Uh, I'm not getting that tall for a while yet. And what if we just lower the map a little? That wouldn't be honest. But it would be clever. There are a lot of great proverbs, but my favorite one is measure twice, cut once. And to measure things right, you need measuring tools. The simplest one is a ruler. With its help, we can find out the length of an object. A watch can tell us how much time has passed. A speedometer shows us how fast we are moving, like in a car or on a bike. An electric meter keeps track of how much electricity we are using. A decibel meter can tell us who is screaming or stomping louder. And a beam compass is used to accurately measure the size of a coin or a hole. We couldn't get by without wonderful tools like these. If we didn't measure the things we are building carefully, everything around us would just come loose and fall apart. Uh-oh. Dad. Dad. Look, Dad. Hmm, that's strange. Looks like you are a little taller. 
Does that mean you'll take me with you? Yeah. Are you ready? Yay! Ugh. But everyone who goes to Africa has to get vaccinated. You're okay with that, aren't you? I need vaccinations to go. Are you sure? Yeah, there's one against malaria, tsetse fly, crocodile bites. Altogether, there are ten shots. Ten shots? Yeah, ten. Oh. Dad, you know, I was joking. After you left the room, I moved the map down. Okay, I see. And I was joking about all those shots you need. What? You mean you don't need to get shots? You gotta. Just not ten. So how many? Nine of them. There's no vaccination anywhere to stop a crocodile from biting you. <laughs> see how pretty you look today. Well, just don't tell that to the elevator. Bye-bye. Check it out, Nolik. Class, huh? You're not gonna get in trouble for doing that? Uh, no. My dad gave me permission to take a few pictures with his camera. No, I mean the picture. You're sure that your mom and dad will like that you took it without asking for permission? But look, what a good picture. You know what, Tom Thomas? You're like a regular paparazzi or something. Paparazzi? They're the ones that take one photo and get millions, aren't they? You're right. And don't care about anyone except their photo apparatsis. <sighs> Did you ever wonder how a photo camera works? Let's say you want to take a picture of nature. The light that's outside goes into the camera's lens. That's the glass eye on the front of the camera. The lens takes the light from the scene outside the camera and turns it into a tiny picture that's inside the camera. Then the picture is recorded onto a special electronic sensor called a matrix that's sensitive to light. Click, and there's your photo. What a great idea! Now I know! I'm going to be a paparazzi. Hey, what about your promise? What promise? To never take a picture of us. We're a secret. Stop. Hey, relax. I'll delete them all later. Tom Thomas, stop this right now. I won't until I get a photo of you. No, look, let's run. You can't run from me. The story of the century, the monster and its prey. Tom Thomas! Help! No, he won't help, because he's a paparazzi. Yes, I got it. That's my best photo yet. <gasps> What's all this noise about? Awesome shot. The first cameras were invented almost 200 years ago. But they worked very slowly. If you wanted to have your portrait taken, you'd have to sit still for a whole hour. After film was invented, cameras got much faster, and it became possible to take about 10 pictures a minute. On a piece of film, everything appears to be backwards. Black parts of the picture are white, and the white is black. It doesn't look normal until the picture is transferred from the film to a piece of photographic paper. 
Now people shoot pictures with digital cameras that work without any film at all. You can look at what you shot instantly on a screen to see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can try shooting another one. And today, you don't even need a separate camera to take pictures. Almost every mobile phone has one. Simganolik, are you in there? Hey, come out. I'll stop shooting photos of you. Aren't we friends? I'm sorry, guys. Well, your friends were almost eaten alive by a dog. Please forgive me. Want to look at the photos I took? <laughs> sure, go on, show us what you got. We're not in that shot. We're not there either. <laughs> well done there, paparazzi. Hang on a sec. I still got another one and you're in it. I know for sure. Look! I'm zooming in. It's impossible. I don't believe it. It's possible. But when did you have time to turn into screws? The same time you were pushing the button. When we're scared, we can change faster than the blink of an eye. You lost. <laughs> paparazzi. And what are you gonna do with your millions, Mr. Paparazzi? Uh, would you please stop calling me that? You got it, after every one of those photos is thrown away. All right, I'll delete them. And do I have to delete this one, too? No, keep it. It's a great shot. <gasps> I never even saw you take it. 